I welcome you to Salem United Methodist Church Christmas Eve service. Merry Christmas. We, this year has been such a different year, and this is probably one of most of our favorite services to be here at Christmas Eve. So this year we're very thankful for the technology that we have that we can share Christmas Eve together even though we are apart. We pray that this service will bring you blessings. And again, we wish you a very Merry Christmas. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Holy child, source of smiling joy and eternal hope, look upon us with tender eyes. Holy child, bring your gentle light to the hidden corners of our lives so our fears are rendered small and powerless. Holy child, touch our wounds and lift the hurts and resentments we carry so our words may be clear and our actions may be kind. Child, how close to those who celebrate this holy season without a special loved one, and be near to those whose failing health dims the angelic word. And in each, cause our hearts to leap in wonder, our eyes to tear with joy, and our souls to swell with love. Holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us anew.
lighting of the Advent candle, we light our first candle as a prayer for our suffering world, that our God, who is often hidden, may be revealed to us and to all. We light our second candle as a prayer of hope and longing that God's glory may be revealed on earth through peace and faithful love. We light our third candle as a sign of hope that the Spirit of God may anoint us to show God's liberating love. We light our fourth candle as a sign of God's love, shining in the world through people past and present. We light the Christ candle, thankful that God has come to us, not as a conquering hero, but as a child whose faithful, peaceful life will follow God's way of love. Our scripture this evening is taken from Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that was, took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Tonight we celebrate the inbreaking of light 
and the life into the dark night long ago, into a darkened world full of hurt and pain, into our own darkness. Tonight we celebrate a love that broke through our knowledge of time and space to bring us freedom from our sin. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. The Messiah has come. The stage was perfectly set on that night so long ago. But in order to hear the story properly, we must first lay aside the old notion that compacted time to the point that everything happened at once. Listen afresh to the story of Christ's birth. Never before or since had such a large portion of the world lived in peace under one government. Almost half of the world's population of 138 million people were governed by Rome. For the first time in history, there was an elaborate network of highways and sea routes. People could travel without fear of being attacked or robbed. The education level increased, and a common Greek language emerged, allowing new ideas and thoughts to cross the multicultural barriers. Jerusalem was the most prominent city in the Middle East. It was the political and religious center for the Jewish people and the regional seat for the Roman government. A census had been called for with a distinctly Jewish twist. The people were to return to their ancestral city for registration. This probably meant that Mary also needed to report. Since in Syria, a poll tax was levied on women as well as men. In those days, they did not have our mass media. So why would we expect that they did not have months, if not a couple of years advance notice. Messengers had to be sent out to each town and to every village to spread the emperor's decree. It took time. People had to make business and employment arrangements if they had moved from their ancestral city. It took time. Then they would have to make arrangements for where they would stay. Would Aunt Rhoda have room for us? Or perhaps Cousin Andrew would have enough room, not to mention having to pack up what they would need, closing their homes, and then traveling to where they needed to go. It took time. So the rush for Joseph and Mary to be in Bethlehem on the very night that she was to deliver is not hearing the story correctly. Bethlehem is about five miles from Jerusalem and 85 miles from Nazareth, riding 85 miles on the back of a donkey while nine months pregnant is rushing the story.
his cradle we stand. So led by light of a star sweetly gleaming, here come the wise men from Orient land. The king of kings lay thus in lowly manger in all our trials, born to be our friend. He knows our need to our weakness is no stranger. Second scripture comes from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2 and 6 and 7. People walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this.
tells us, while they were there, the time came for her to deliver a child. While they were there, the time came. Not when they got there, but while they were there. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the Cataluma. Cataluma is the Greek word for upper room. Not in, as it had been translated hundreds of years ago. More than likely, Mary and Joseph were staying with relatives in their home. In those days, the homes were small, basically one room. In the day, a kitchen, and at night, a bedroom for the whole family. Since there was not much room in the home, the roof was often used as a guest room, an upper room, a cataluma. Adjacent to the downstairs main room was the animal stall. The stall was frequently distinguished from the family living area only by the raised platform of the family room. Homes were often built next to a cave, which would serve as a stall for their animals. The animals were the largest assets next to their family that people had, and the animals needed to be prote protected, so were better to keep than close by. While the census taking place, with the census taking place, family members opened up their homes to other family members who had moved into the area, into a space that was tight. So when Mary was about to have her baby, the upper room was full. The only spot in the house under the same roof, not full, and able to provide some kind of privacy was the stall. And what better place for a newborn than a manger cleaned out and filled with fresh, sweet-smelling hay. The inbreaking of light and life into the dark night long ago, into a darkened world full of hurt and pain, into our own darkness, a love that broke through our knowledge of time and space to bring us freedom from our sin. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes by parents who loved him. The Messiah has come. Perhaps not how we would have set the stage, but definitely how God would. For the birth is like any other birth. It is the origin, the identity, the destiny of the child that are significant. The word became flesh, the light of the world, came into our darkness, and in him was life. Michael Card writes, Mary remembers the sound of his cry. But more than that, infinitely more, life was in him. Life that was more than breathing and a heartbeat. It was whatever it is that breathing and beating hearts are a result of. Life, the very thing itself, was in him. He was the life come alive. It was in him. So it was his to give. In fact, that is precisely why he had come to give life. The light that is Jesus shines into, around, and above the darkness of the stable, the darkness of the world, the deep darkness of our own hearts. Tonight, we celebrate the inbreaking of light and life, that dark night long ago, into a darkened world full of hurt and pain and into our own darkness. Amen.
tender and mild. Sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. Go in peace. May the love that made the stars be our guiding light. May the love revealed in Jesus be our hope and inspiration. And may the love of the ever-present spirit give you courage, joy, and hope now and forever. Amen.